June 2019 meeting of the Commission Elder, you can come to order. Please rise and join me in saluting the flag and a moment of silence for our signature flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. John Wallace. Here. Mark Ryan is absent and excused. Gail Protopappas is also absent and excused. Robin Theodos. Present. Pat Robage. Here. Mary Dion. Here. Charlotte DeMarco is also absent and excused. All right. Would you please read the minutes of the last meeting? Department of Elder Services Commissioners meeting May 16, 2019. The meeting was called to order at 1.30 p.m. by Chair Mark Ryan with a salute to the flag and a moment of silence. Roll call. Present was Mark Ryan, Gail Protopappas, Pat Rova, Charlotte DeMarco, Mary Dion, Robert Theodos, and John Wallace. Minutes of March 21, 2019, Robin Theodos moved to accept the minutes of March 21, 2019 as written. It was seconded by Pat Robage, upon motion made and second. Voted to accept the minutes of March 21, 2019 as written. written. <coughs> Old business, none. Director's report, the April monthly statistics was read into the record by Terry Marciello and will be delivered to the town hall. New business. Nominations for Chair and Vice Chair. Nominations for New Chair and Vice Chair were in order as Mark Ryan and Gail Protopappas have been in these positions for the past two consecutive years. John Wallace motioned to hold nominations for Chair and Vice Chair and Robin Theodos second the motion. Open nominations for Chair. John Wallace nominated Gail Protopappas for the Chair position, but Gail Protopappas declined nomination. Gail Protopappas nominated Mary Dion, and Mary accepted the nomination. Mary Dion nominated John Wallace, and John accepted the nomination. Mark Ryan closed nominations, and voting commenced with two votes for Mary Dion and five votes for John Wallace. John Wallace was appointed as new chair with majority vote. Open nominations for vice chair. Robin Theodos nominated Mark Ryan for vice chair position and Mark accepted nomination. No other nominations. Vote was taken and Mark Ryan was unanimously voted in as vice chair. Kitchen and building renovations. After meeting with Norfolk kitchen representatives, they came back with a new layout and pricing for kitchen renovations. It was determined that the cost was extremely higher than expected. Jeff Hall, George Hooper, and Terry Marciello met again to regroup and form a new plan, and the decision was made for the new kitchen renovations be performed in-house. Frank from Public Buildings has been working on a new air conditioning and heating unit. This is needed because the two older heating units will be removed and there will be a need for additional heat and air conditioning. We received our new refrigerator and freezer, and these will have a lock-in system. The regular white refrigerator we have now will remain for all seniors to use. The new freezer will be relocated to where the freezer is presently, but some minor repairs need to be made for it to fit. The coffee station will be moved to where the bulletin board is located. The floors in the large function room will be finished sometime after the July 11th cookout. The response for the game room renovations have been extremely positive and everyone likes the paint color, so we will be using the same color to paint the large function room. There also has been new lighting added throughout the building, which has made a huge difference. At this time, we were planning on the center being closed for programming for a couple of days for these renovations to take place. The staff will be here, but all activities and classes will be canceled for safety reasons. Several commissioners asked how we will be informing seniors of this information. Terry stated that the staff will no notify seniors verbally and we will also have signs posted throughout the building. Charlotte DeMarco asked if it was possible to get higher toilets because it is extremely difficult to get up from the ones in place at this time. Terry said that was a great su suggestion and she would pass this information along. Mark Ryan asked if there will be a new heating system installed at the center. 
Terry stated there was a new boiler put in the building a few years ago. Robin Theodore stated that the craft room is extremely cold in the winter months and that any space heater that is used is not sufficient. She also questioned whether all these renovations are in place of a new center. Terry reiterated that there is still a need for a new center and these are much needed repairs and renovations for the center at this time. Fourth of July building. For the month of June through the first couple of weeks of July, we will not have access to the 4th of July building. The conference room at the Wilmington Police Department has been graciously offered to hold our memory cafe on June 19, 2019. We will have to move groups around in order to accommodate the art class returning to the center. Terry stated that she would like to invite each selectman to hold quarterly visits here at the center which would allow each one to have a chance to see what is happening here and to speak with our members. Upcoming May events, Art Show. This will be held on Thursday, May 23rd, 2019 from 1 to 4 o'clock p.m. There will be light refreshments and this is always quite the show. The paintings will remain up through the Memorial Day luncheon so everyone can enjoy the exhibit. Estate Planning Program. This program will take place on Thursday, May 30th, 2019 and will be held in the craft room. Memorial Day Luncheon. Our annual Memorial Day Luncheon will be held on Friday, May 24, 2019 at 12 p.m. The cost will be $5 and all veterans are free of charge. Game Night. This will take place on Thursday, May 30th, 2019 from 4.30 to 7 o'clock p.m. with a light dinner, game playing, and fun activities. Game Night will be the third Thursday every month through September. Bocce. We have had one of our volunteers, Michaela, working on cleaning and preparing the bocce court. She has been volunteering for her community service, but has gone above and beyond. She is the granddaughter of George Webster, who was our former art instructor. Dear Ian and Abby performance. The slide performance by the Delvina Group will take place on Thursday, June 6, 2019 at 1 o'clock p.m. Fit Forever. We were approached by Talia from the Fit Body Boot Camp in Wilmington to offer a pilot program to our seniors. With space being an issue, the six-week pilot program will be held at their studio by Tremezos. We had a similar program about 10 years ago with CATS. It was well received and we feel this will be a great opportunity for some seniors with the focus being on balance and training. There will be no fee for anyone taking part in the program as the center will be covering the cost. Robin Theodos wanted to thank Terry again for using outside resources because of space and issues at the center, and she appreciates all the great programs she brings to the senior center. Special homebound meal. This will take place on Tuesday, June 25, 2019, and will be sponsored by Assistant Hands Home Care. The meals will be provided by Panera Bread. We are still looking for more volunteers to help deliver these meals. We will have staff from Assistant Hands also helping with delivery. Charlotte DeMarco asked if Doris and her crafters will be supplying a special surprise to go with each meal. Charlie Card. We had approximately 75 people attend this program. Senator Todd dropped by and his aide Dick Carr and ran the program along with help from Terry Marciello. The process was extremely efficient with filling out an application, having a picture taken, and a copy of their license. People were extremely pleased with how quickly the process moved. These cards are good for approximately five to ten years. Due to the incredible response, we are hoping to make this a yearly event. Comments from the audience? None. Comments from the commission? Robin Theodos requested that her beating class be held every Wednesday as all the participants I have, have been asking to meet every week. Terry stated that the availability, availability of rooms is a problem and if they are willing to change their day of the week, we might be able to accommodate the request. At this time, the room is available on Monday and Tuesday afternoons. Charlotte DeMichael thanked John Wallace for accepting his nomination as the next chair for the Elders Commission. She also thanked Mark Ryan for serving as the chair for the past two years. John Wallace asked if there will be a vote for which month there will be no commissioners meeting held in the summer. Mark Ryan addressed the commissioners and a vote was unanimous for no meeting held in the month of July 18, 2019. Adjourned there being no further business to come before the commission, John Wallace moved to adjourn the meeting and it was seconded by Charlotte DeMarco. Upon motion made and second, voted to adjourn the meeting at 2.38 p.m. Next commissioner's meeting is scheduled for June 20th, 2019 at 1.30 p.m. 
respectfully submitted Paula Mirabella, senior clerk. Thank you, Paula. Good job. Are there any changes to the minutes as read? I got a question. Yes. The uh, game night uh, next month. Isn't that the week that the... Uh, hold on, we have to kind of stay with uh, the notes. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. All right, do we have a motion to accept the minutes as read? I'll make that motion. We have a second. I second. We have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Pat, okay. it's coming up. It's coming up. No, I... Yeah. Sorry, didn't they? That's yeah. why I... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. The... At this time, we're going to turn the meeting over to the Director of Elderly Services, Terry Marciello. Terry? Hi, gang. Okay, so a few things. Uh, obviously, I've taken a few notes as I'm as Paul was talking. So, um, as you can see, update for the kitchen in the building. Um, so, the actual it's actually starting on um, July fifteenth, the Monday, July fifteenth. Um, what are you doing? I just asked her to slip me over. What about the sign? Anybody else in the agenda? All set. Okay. Sorry about that. No, it's fine. Um, so, uh, for, for an update on the building. So, what actually it's July 15th, uh, it's a Monday, uh, that we're going to be starting, uh, they're going to be starting the work. So, it's for that whole week. So, unbeknownst to you, John, who you are so ahead of the group, last uh, month when you said about us having a vote for the commissioner's meeting, not to be on the 18th was more than appropriate because we can't use the building then. Uh, we can't use the room then. Um, and so uh, at the same time, as you were um, sharing, um, Pat, is that the game day is going to be on July 25th, um, the following Thursday. Uh, so for, again, for that week of July 15th, starting on Monday, that's a Monday through the Friday, there will be no programming. Um, there will be not sure if they're going to start sanding the floors or because they have to like take down um, the doorways and that type of thing to be able for the dust that they're working on and the smell and um, so everything will, will be hopefully completed that at that week um, and it'll be wonderful because we'll have the weekend for it to dry um, so that will be kudos of, of getting that all done in here um, so no one coming to the center from Monday through Friday. So, uh, um, so yes, we're not going to be having the programming at all for Monday through Friday. Excuse me, um, I have the dates on that. The 15th Thank through you. the 19th. And, uh, and we are, people can enter the building um, if there's a, a need to speak to us, but not to really just hang out because it's really not to your people's advantage of, but um, that if anyone needs to, to get a hold of us to, to more or less call the beginning of the week, I see, but you're not going to be able to use the kitchen. Nothing's really going to be able to be used. So it's really, um, but I know some people are still going to pop in. And I know they will, so we're fine. Um, so we're excited about that. Things are starting to happen. Uh, for the for the building, so this is this is getting to be to be good news. At the same time, for the building in this room, um, they uh, we've been having a problem with our sound system. Um, we needed uh, the the mic itself. Uh, there were some problems with. So the company that we worked with back in 2004, I believe it was, is still working with us. They're a fantastic group. Uh, right now, I'm missing can't recall their name. What we're going to do is um, we're going to get some new mics. We're also going to get clip-on mics. Um, so say, for example, our Tai, tai Chi teacher, aerobics teacher, um, Zumba teacher, they can use that um, so people can hear because it will go into the eight speaker system above. Um, and then at the same time, it's going to be hooked into, we're going to get a larger, um, larger TV here and that is going to also be uh, the sound system is going to be hooked up um, to these eight speakers so that for our movie nights that we've been having um, our movie day, days that we've been having that type of thing people can really hear it so much better because right now when we're having uh, movies it's truly the volume from the TV itself God bless that it has a wonderful volume but it would be so much better when it goes to the eight speakers above so those things are going to be uh, worked on uh, within the summer months, we're hoping. 
Um, but the biggest thing right now is that the floors, the floors will be done. Any questions on that for the commissioners? Okay, and then, um, so our uh, annual cookout is July 11th. Um, and thanks to the public buildings, actually the public buildings department has been extremely supportive because that's how all these things are being done. Uh, George Hooper, uh, the superintendent and his crew, and I can't thank them enough. They purposely have waited till after July 11th so we could have our cookout um, here. So that works out great. So July 11th um, is our cookout and that, that will be at noontime, that's a, on a Thursday. Um, game night for the only for the month of July will be the fourth Thursday, which will be July 25th at 4:30. Um, and so it will be July 25th, and then for it will be on August 15th, September 19th, and October 17th. And it just so happens that actually it's every game night is the same day of our commissioner's meetings. Okay. So the third, the third Thursday, except for July. So your Thursdays will be busy. <laughs> I, this is maybe not the right thing, but before I forget, I'm looking to reschedule meeting class. Okay. And I don't know where we're moving to, but I'll discuss it with you. Yes, perfect. Okay. Perfect. Actually, I, I want, I have a um, thing on here about your class, so. Um, to kudo you. So uh, I'm just going to let you know in the few, we have, uh, I'm very happy to say uh, that Charlotte from the library, she has, has been working on a grant um, and I'm very happy to say we're a part of it. More information will be coming about that, but it's so uh, wonderful to be able to say, you know, you really use that quote better together uh, because we are so fortunate. Um, to be able to be working hand in hand with the library on this upcoming project and I'm very pleased to be saying that we are working with the library because they the department is, is wonderful as in the rest. They do yep. a lot. Yeah, so um, I, I very much look forward to that and I'll be giving you more information. So that Keep Fit Forever um, exercise program, uh, the one that was mentioned in the last meeting, that's actually starting tomorrow, which is June 21st, so it's at 10 o'clock. The um, response to that was wonderful. Uh, we have 13 participants, um, and then we also have, I believe we have six people on our waiting list. So uh, it'll be great to see how this all works out. Um, the teacher herself is very enthusiastic, uh, so I will be keeping you updated on that. But that does start tomorrow, uh, which is uh, uh, Friday. Um, it will be continuing for Fridays for the next six weeks. Um, the volunteer homebound meal, I want to say um, thank you so much to uh, Assisting Hands Home Care. They are the, the group of people that are donating to make this meal possible for us. Um, and in fact, several other staff will be here on, on the 25th, uh, which is coming Tuesday to help deliver these meals. We approximately have 85 uh, people right now that we're receiving. We have several volunteers um, and I, th I think uh, we are okay with the volunteers unless anyone else here wants to further volunteer. Uh, but we, this is one of our exciting times because I just feel, especially for the 4th of July, um, the town is so active. There's so many wonderful things going on at the Common and uh, with the, the community that I just want to make sure that people that aren't able to make it are feeling a part of it. So this is one way of trying trying to do that. Uh, so that will be on the uh, June 25th, which is the week before the 4th of July. <laughs> Unbelievable how fast July is popping up. Um, the Bocce Courts, um, the reason I, I bring those up is uh, a couple of things. As uh, Paula mentioned in the previous notes, we were very fortunate to have a student that was trying to, to clearing that up and trying to make it possible for us to be able to play, which I know people have already started using the courts. But right now, I'm in the process of trying to meet with an Eagle Scout 
Um, and this project this year would be uh, for our back area. Um, the goal is to be able to have, and I'm hoping it will be possible, um, to be having lighting, um, to have a, a, a nice pleasant to the eye garden set up. And um, garden not meaning fruits and vegetable garden, meaning flowers, um, with large pot, large um, you know pots and things for it to be more more uh, relaxing sitting out there. Uh, and also, if, if the picnic tables need a little bit of fixing up, to kind of do that. So that's a goal uh, for us to be able to do with this new uh, Eagle Scout project. <coughs> and I can let you know further further about that. Um, when it says comes to say thank yous and acknowledgement, I really want to thank the Arts Council for making it possible for us to have um, the Dear Abby, Ann and Abby. Did you, any of you get to go to that presentation? Yes. From, oh, you know, I just love their theater group. They are just, and they're so good to us. Is that recorded? No. No, it's not. It's not. Um, but that was made possible through the Arts Council. They, they promoted that for us um, for this event. So I just want to say thank you to them. I also want to say thank you to the police department uh, for um, Paul Charlefort for organizing for us again to be having, as Paula mentioned, the Memory Cafe uh, was at uh, the police station or public safety building uh, yesterday. And it went very well. Um, and then people got to meet the officers and. and um, I want to thank them very much for having us be able to use their space. As they say, space is very valuable these days. We're very fortunate, even though we're bursting at the seams, that we have other places willing to donate both time and space for us. We're exactly very fortunate. Right. We are. You're absolutely right, Robin. And also, I just, as I had previously mentioned, I just wanted to say thank you so much to the Public Buildings Department for taking the time to try to figure as to um, different things that the building does need and they are uh, working it within their, within their schedule. Which segues in just for a minute on the side as to, <coughs> for the kitchen, they, um, we have the new freezer and refrigerator that we had previously mentioned. But obviously, due to the height of the, the freezer, as the old freezer came out, we had to make a, a change the um, recess setting uh, for that freezer. So uh, the public of department, uh, I mean, uh, public buildings has been very good in, in trying to make this possible, which now has cleared up. Um, the white refrigerator is going to be used for uh, everybody that comes within the building. That's a space that they can put their lunch. I know people were very upset for a while. They want in their ice cubes. They have ice cubes. They can. Um, so anything that anyone wants to be able to use that refrigerator for during the day, if they need to put anything in, they can. Then the other uh, stainless steel ones, which is again the freezer and the refrigerator, will be locked. They'll be used for our supplies. <coughs> will be locked. Um, also, I wanted to mention, uh, as you see on your notes, is Zachary uh, Dancewitz. He was the student that was from Shawshin Tech, uh, who redid our um, attic for storage, which Paula knows right away that what a difference and how helpful it was. Um, and so he is this year's recipient of the scholarship, the high school scholarship. Um, and I can't I can't say enough. I know he he's actually going to Wentworth. Uh, in the fall, he uh, has been, he, was, he just did a phenomenal job, and I have to say he was extremely professional. And then in the future, if this gentleman should ever own his own business, I am going to be on his list because he, um, he really knows his work. He's a wonderful craftsman, um, and he's a great leader, and he's very personable as working with everyone. So I really feel that he did a, a fantastic, fantastic job. It's very nice to hear that some of our young people are really stepping up. That oh, was wonderful. Very, I have to say, I was I'm just very impressed with the gentleman. It's nice to get good news. <laughs> it really is. It's wonderful. Actually, uh, Robin and I were fortunate enough to get invited to Museum Court of Honor. 
Oh, so wonderful. Actually, yes, they had asked me to and it ended up that I wasn't um, in the area to be able to go. Uh, and I was, uh, but I'm so glad to hear that you were both there because he really, wonderful, wonderful student. Well, I'm, or graduate, I should say, graduate. Yeah. But I'm very pleased. I've been to a couple of people's couple of things and it's so pleasant. And we were just, I experienced a boy scout. Can't believe. And these kids, they're trying so hard. It's wonderful to see this sad. You don't see this on the TV. Mm -hmm. This, they're out there. They're doing and a the good amazing job. thing is, like you're saying, Robin, is no one really realizes the amount of work that it is to be an Eagle Scout and to get up your Eagle Scout. Commitment, so. commitment, commitment. Mm -hmm. it's a also, long on the life part of the parents, you. too. Oh, yeah. <laughs> to bring up is you know sometimes you kind of wonder are people really reading our newsletter you know sometimes the staff and I know they are because they're asking where is it um, but the other day it was very 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 refreshing for the beating class as in we had a woman that uh, really wanted to be a part of a beating class and wanted to learn and um, she really searched it out and because of our newsletter and because of being on the website and she was able to see that there was one here at the senior center. Um, came from another town, actually. Ooh. And um, I, yeah, I was just looking at Robin Essence in the class. And, and uh, it was just so refreshing because, and I think Robin probably could speak to it too, that she was so appreciative to be a part of the class. Um, she was so happy. Yes. And she had to drive. She's not used to driving. But she joined into the exercise class, and she's just like, "Dump my money for driving that far." <laughs> <laughs> um, so it is, you know, it is wonderful to know that people do do read it, and, um, and and Paul, it's good for you to know that people are reading it on the website with your hard work of getting it on there. Yeah, uh, that, that it really does does make a difference. It really does make a difference. So every once in a while, but I just wanted to say, you know, she could have gone into that beating class and go, I don't know if this is what I want, but Robin's class is so opening uh, and so genuine as to come on in and join us, you have some fun with us, and she's very anxious to come back, so I'm very pleased. thank you very much. I'm very pleased. Thank you very, very much. When we reorganized, I told her I called her because we don't know when the next class is. Yep. And so we'll work on that one. Yeah. I'd also like to stay for the record. We have three gentlemen in our class. <laughs> <laughs> Not for anything. Every, everybody's welcome. That's true. That's a good point. That's a good point. Everybody's welcome. A good time is usually had by all. Yep. Yep. Um, so at this point, I think that is it. Are you had a question? Yes. Are you all set with meal on wheels drivers? So for Meals on Wheels, um, you know, I want to say uh, Tom Wal Walsh who has been a wonderful, wonderful driver and he has um, decided to retire. And in his retirement, it's been very difficult, just as when Robin and John retired, uh, but then they get, keep getting pulled back in, um, that we have to, you know, fill in, you know, finding other drivers. Uh, I've been very fortunate that we have some college students this summer that are stepping up and really wanting to be a part of um, helping out for the summer as to doing home delivered meals. So we are in the process, but we are, and I think there are, there's another person that I will be meeting too, so we probably have four that have stepped up, but when I say that, they're kind of mixing. They can't do, like just all, always do um, all the Mondays, so there has been a, a schedule um, that we are trying to do, but thank you very much, and I am gonna continue to put it out there uh, for home delivered meals because um, just with people's vacations and you're just not sure that it's such a, a vital service that we have to make sure we have backup for it. So. Terry, question. Someone who came in for Shine asked me about the Charlie card when they were being uh, delivered. So um, uh, for the Charlie card, that was supposed to take six to eight weeks. Oh, okay. So, first, no, no, six to eight weeks. That's okay, Kevin. 
um, to be uh, to be processed. Okay. So you know what, and I just want to. Um, so before we end, there's two things I want to ask. Number one. Um, so if there's anything that you feel that you would like on this agenda to be discussed, uh, no, please let me know and I will get it on there. Um, I think I, I've been you know, mainly making the agenda uh, and for a while there I was having some input, but I, you know, if anyone feels that anything should be discussed, please bring it up. And then the other thing is um, Robin, um, I don't to Robin, she's going to be mentioned right now, but Robin started a discussion a couple um, last month and the month before as to our concern of improving this improving some situations in the building which we have to in order to continue um, how will that affect um, what's the next step for the senior center for our new senior center and um, it's come to the time it's come to the time where I will be um, speaking to you individually as to, uh, I think we need to start uh, discussing this, start preparing. This is a good time right now. Um, the summertime is kind of tends to be a quiet time, <laughs> but um, it's a time for us to, to kind of regroup. How we want to go about this? Uh, what's our next step? People that we'd like to pull in to discuss it. And when I say that, I think it's it's very crucial for this to get off the ground, that it's not only people that come to the center and the age, the age of the people that come to the 60 or over, but I think it's also crucial that we get younger people involved in doing this. Definitely. Uh, they people, you know, I also have to say students have also, uh, can be very helpful as in voicing their opinion, voicing their concerns, and getting involved. People in their 50s, uh, I'm sorry to say, but they're right around the corner that will be um, our place to be going. Um, so I think we have to think of how we want to go about this because this is, we are at a turning point. We are at that point. The master's facility plan um, was made and we are on that plan. We need to act on this now. Um, when you say we are on that plan, are we definitely on that plan? Uh, we're on the master's facility plan, yes. So it's supposed to be between a two, two to three year mark. I so, also, I have been thinking that the location swain is, is a choice piece of property for a town hall if they wanted to tend to leave. But we are so jammed with traffic. At this time, it's really getting blocked up lately. So I thought the people that is something I want right. to discuss. With but I don't think that one was a that wasn't like a top. Um, I think we need to review in our meetings, review the master plan. Okay. As to the location. Yeah. So things I would like as to do the location. That. Yep. So um, it would probably be a good idea that I get a copy of that for us um, and hand, have that uh, for, if, for next meeting. If I could, um, actually, it would probably be before next meeting, seeing as we're not meeting in July. And if I could have you uh, look at it, review it about the location, what their thoughts were, just to kind of refresh us as to, and then um, we need to really start uh, thinking as to how we want to deal with this. No matter where, what they do in this town, they're going to be impacted by traffic. Mm -hmm. We are getting a little bit of gridlock going on. I'm, I'm, see, I'm seeing it. I've been here long enough to see the changes. Mm -hmm. And we have a serious traffic problem. And that's something we should be addressing also when we work towards this goal. Right, right. I think I think that's a piece of it. But uh, that's I don't what I don't say it is yeah, a piece. Yes, yeah, yeah, it's a piece that goes off to the side of it. Yes. Yeah. Um, but I think we need I d I don't wanna wait any longer. I really think we need to um, to get going on this. Uh, so we do have to so if anyone, um, not necessarily now, but if you could think about it. Um, as to when, when we say senior center, what's your thoughts um, as to get, getting a new one? And just, I know several of you have quite a few thoughts. So if we could kind of get this a little fine tuned and a plan in place um, as to how we want to deal with this, because it's all from marketing 
goes from marketing all the way up um, as to how we're gonna how we're gonna make our point. But we can't as of here it is uh, June 2019. Amen. We really need to. So I think I just need to set that seed with us today. Do we have a list of the members of the original group? Original group of? Uh, the housing committee. A yes. Sub yes. Committee. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yep. We have all that. Okay. All set. All set. Okay. Any comments from the audience? Any comments from the commissioners? Bathroom, no. I'm sorry. That's time, okay. No. No. Okay. No. That hasn't. That hasn't. Um, we have to say. Yeah, I brought that up. That's yeah. okay. Just asking. Okay, I have something. Terry, you received an award. Late. Would you please uh, give us some info on? Sorry. Uh, so, um, I was uh, very um, surprised to hear that. Um, and very fortunate, I guess, uh, Senator Tarr um, nominated um, or presented to, to, for me to be an uh, um, unsung heroine of uh, Massachusetts. What it is is a group of women. Um, you've got, it's a, it's a committee, I forget the name of the committee, God forgive me, uh, that uh, bring attention to women that are in the state of Massachusetts that kind of help their communities and Et cetera. And I was uh, very fortunate uh, to be uh, selected and asked um, to get this award, and so I received it uh, this week. Uh, what day was that? Tuesday, the 18th. I think it was the 18th. And I was very fortunate to be able to go into the state house, into the flag. Um, that was the flag room, I think it's called, and. Uh, be among the most magnificent women. Um, there were over a hundred women, and I have to tell you, uh, for the women that are sitting in this room, we are very fortunate there are strong women in the state of Massachusetts because uh, these women really rock the world. And, uh, and the people that have gotten in the past are very strong, and um, it was just so wonderful to, to talk to these ladies. And then I was very, very fortunate that um, town manager, uh, Jeff Hall and uh, Beverly Dalton, and also my son, uh, were there. And uh, we got to go to the um, Senate chambers. Uh, uh, Senator Tarr brought us there, and we got some pictures done. And then he also shared some history. Uh, so it was, it was quite a day. Uh, but I have to say, you know, here I am getting this. Uh, but there's things that I am very fortunate, I adore my job. But the reason that I adore it is that I have wonderful staff, I have wonderful people in the community that are extremely supportive of this department, and I also have all of you that are here. And um, that it would, none of that would have been possible um, if I didn't love what I do, and it's because of all of you and all the support from the town that. That I did. So thank you so much. Thank you for bringing that up. Thanks, Excuse me. Well I, I would like to thank you. Thank you. Close the door and mom over Yes. Well said. You you you've worked for community prior to getting here. You've earned your place, and you've done a wonderful job. And I'm so pleased you have a full staff now, because you've been working and spinning your wheels for quite a while. Ago. <laughs> And not for anything, you deserve it. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, John. Do we have a motion to adjourn? I make a motion. I'll second. Do we have a second? We have a second. A motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. This meeting is adjourned.